doctors and trained nurses. They just wanted to get out because the atmosphere was so emotionally depressing and they just didn't really feel anybody really cared. They were like a number, like a machine. I remember speaking to a group of nurses from a very, very famous hospital and they were telling me one after another about disasters of patients due to mistakes. And they all agreed that it all came down to not really caring about the person. Traditionally, whether it was in Greece or in India, which are the seats of Western and Eastern civilization, every doctor took an oath of compassion. They were there for the purpose of actually healing a person's life. This is nothing new. This is where medical care actually began. In a spirit of compassion. But unfortunately, like so many things in this modern world, what is meant to be an extension of kindness for the well-being of others becomes nothing more than a business, a profession, a way to make money, to get power, to attain fame and prestige. But we have seen greed can never bring happiness or fulfillment to the heart. It can give some sense of temporary flickering satisfaction to the mind and maybe to the body. But real happiness is a thing of the heart. There's only one thing that brings fulfillment to the heart. A meaningful life where we experience love. If you don't have some, if, if you don't love others and you don't feel loved by others, no matter what else you may have, it's all an empty shell. In order to give, we must have something to give. True religion, true spirituality, is not about fighting over sectarian differences. It's about reconnecting with our own essence. The word yoga means to reconnect. The word religion, which comes from a Greek word, religio, means to bind one's backs to one's own essence. In the Bible, both the Old Testament and the New Testament, for the Jews and the Christians, the first and great commandment is to love God with all your heart, mind, and soul. And what is the nature of love of God? Naturally, spontaneously, it manifests as compassion. Where you love your neighbor as yourself. And every living thing is our neighbor. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna tells, Aham bija prata pita, that I am the father and I am the mother of all living beings. 
The Gita also tells, as Dr. Mishra quoted, Vidyavanaya Sampane, Brahmani Kavihastini, Sunichaiva Supakicha Pandita Samadarshana. What is wisdom? What is actual knowledge? It's not simply about how much data we have collected in our brain. It's not simply about what we can accomplish with our hands. Real knowledge, real wisdom that brings fulfillment and meaning to life is the capacity to see every living being with equal vision. Whether one is a Hindu or a Muslim or a Buddhist or a Jew or a Christian or a Jain or a Sikh or a Zoroastrian, or whether one is an agnostic or an atheist or a man or a woman, whether one is rich or poor, educated or uneducated, black, white, red or yellow or brown in color, or even whether one is an elephant or a cow or a dog or a cat, wherever there is life, it is sacred. Reverence toward life is the natural outpouring of the heart that is in connection to God. Krishna tells in Gita, every living being, wherever there is life, that spark of consciousness, seeing through the eyes and tasting through the tongue and hearing through the ears and thinking through the brain and feeling through the heart, wherever that life force is, it is part and parcel of, of God, who we call Krishna. This is the universal principle of true religion. to feel compassion and to want to make a real difference. My beloved Guru, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, every letter he wrote, he ended it with a line, I hope this meets you in best of health. It seems like a very simple, common statement by an old Swami, but it was so profound because what was the meaning behind it? That little statement, I hope this letter meets you in the best of health, is an ultimate prayer. It's an ultimate outpouring of compassion. Holistic health is physical, emotional, and spiritual and to harmonize all three built on the foundation of compassion. Bhaktivedanta Hospital is named after him for this very purpose, to attempt with sincerity to actually help people be healthy and happy. Physical health, our doctors and nurses and administrators, with as much integrity and dignity as possible, try to go as deep as they can into their scientific medical capacity to heal bodies. And their attitude of giving people a sense of value. You are just not a number. You are important to us. God has sent you to us. And we are serving and showing our love for him by how we treat you. We care about you. 
interestingly, in my 61 years of walking around this world, I found something that sounds simple, but it's very really revolutionary, at least to me. No matter how much you know, no matter how much we can do, we are empowered by a grace unlimitedly beyond our own when we earnestly and sincerely care about someone. When people feel valued, loved, and cared for, they feel shelter. And they become emotionally healed. As all of you have already understood much more than me, stress and anxiety are two of the principal influences that cause disease and that inhibit people from being healed from disease. Bhaktivedanta Hospital in her spiritual care department and in every department is united in this principle that it is our duty, our responsibility to give emotional health through love, care, and encouragement to every patient. And spiritual health to help people according to whoever they are. Dr. Sanke explained whether they're atheists or agnostics or whether they have a particular religion or whether they're very, very dedicated. In every case, to try to give people an understanding of the sacredness of life. We are beyond birth. We are beyond death. Najayate mriyate vakada chit. That the soul is eternal. It is never born. And it can never die. It's not the soul that is diseased when the body is diseased. The actual disease on a spiritual level is selfish passion, greed, anger, arrogance, envy, and illusion. If we can help people to actually cure this disease, they realize their health beyond birth and beyond death. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, there's a beautiful verse that better than a very, very long life in this world is one moment of full consciousness of who we are, our relationship with God, and our relationship with all other living beings. And many of the greatest people in the world who made the big the most profound impact, they didn't necessarily live long lives. I was in California where I saw trees that were 3,000 years old. Jesus lived 31 years. Shankaracharya lived 32 years. Lord Chaitanya lived 48 years. But what was their impact in the world? It is very crucial at this time within our social condition to understand the root causes of the disease that are troubling humanity. The United States of America has had tremendous affluence, wealth, in many ways, 
people of India chase after the things of the West. Personally, I came to the West to chase after the things from India. But look at the situation. Due to greed and arrogance, the economy is suffering miserably. In the ghettos of America, you don't want to get out of your car because you'll probably be killed. The ghettos of India, you could walk around happily, no problem. Wealth, power, prestige can never bring about a real transformation in the quality of life unless there's inner fulfillment. Spiritual care beyond any sectarian religious denomination is so crucial today because whoever we are, Eastern, Western, rich or poor, people get sick. And however great our medical technology, it seems that more and more and more and more people need hospitals. That says something. When people leave a hospital, ideally, they should understand certain lessons and have some sense of deeper fulfillment and meaning so that when they leave, they don't live such a reckless, stressful life that destroys themselves physically, emotionally, and spiritually. And if it's done with compassion, it can really transform hearts. To be an instrument of God's love is the greatest honor, the greatest privilege, and the greatest satisfaction. If the doctors in this room really strive to purify our own hearts and make that connection and be an instrument of that grace, We could start a revolution throughout the world. A revolution of consciousness. A revolution of care. A revolution of love. Thank you very much.